his seed begging bread. Amen? You know, the crazy thing about that is he starts off by saying, I was young and now I'm old. It's an interesting thing for your lifespan for you to be able to say that. I was young, but now I'm old, but, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen? Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Psalms 91. I won't be before you long. I want to talk to you for just a second about that. Uh, Psalms 91, and we will be in there. Um, the Lord has been messing with me for a little bit. I posted something. Ever since I started talking about the apps and we and Minister Pringle named it, we started talking about it. I've been noticing some things in all of us and I've even noticed some things in me. Uh, most of the things I've been noticing about in me has uh, been some things I need to, to adjust. Amen. But uh, it's been working so well for me. And I've even noticed some things that's been changing in some of your lives. And I started telling them to my kids. I started telling some of the apps to my kids uh, at school and I would. Uh, told, and finally, I just said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and tell them. They was like, well, why did you change? And I was like, because I saw that it was working. And if it's working in my life, then it's working in your life. And I told them, I said, uh, your life, your talents, and abilities is God's gift to you. But what you do with it is your gift to him. Still waiting to see if I'm going to get in trouble for saying it that way, but it is what it is. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, uh, Miss Linda, happy birthday tomorrow. How old are you going to be? 78 years young. 78 years young. Amen. All right now. You get it now. Can't wait to be able to say it to you on your 90th birthday. Amen. You look great. Um, I want to, um, oh, by the way, thank you all for the, uh, the cards and the things that you guys gave and just the love that you guys showed over veterans, uh, not veterans, uh, over the pastoral anniversary. I guess that is a type of Veterans Day. And uh, a pastoral appreciation. And the love that uh, you guys have shown the veterans on today. Amen. Sometimes we go through some things. And so when you guys do that, it kind of, you know, it blesses us and makes us think it, maybe it was all worth it. Amen. And so we just want to say thank you for honoring the veterans. Amen. Um, we love you. So I wanted to start off, uh, and I want you to stand uh, in just a second. I'm going to read two things. I'm actually going to read Psalms 23 first, but I'm going to talk from Psalms 91. Amen? I'll read it, and you can just turn to Psalms 91. Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. In green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. He refreshes or restores my soul. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. I lost my place. Amen. Uh, he guides me along the right path for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know, he graduated from that, and he went on, as, and, and he went to Psalms 46, and he says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. And I'll, I'll read that a little bit to you. But then he goes, and finally, I'm going to get here. He goes to Psalms 91, and he says this, Psalms 91. He said, he who dwells in the shelter, one version says, secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. For he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. And he will cover you with his pinions or his wings. And, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is your shield and buckler. 
you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the reward or recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. The most high who is your refuge in my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you and no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, on the young lion and the serpent. You will trample under feet, because he holds fast to me in love, and I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he has known my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You can be seated. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you alone are God. God, we love you. God, we bless you. God, I speak life over everything that's said here today. And so, God, we honor you. We honor you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I found an app in this, an attitude, a position, and a posture. But I want to just explain something to you. Later on, David went on in the scripture as he began to grow in God, and he began to find, and the, the writers of the Psalms began to find some other things. But I want you to, to take note of something that David makes, and, and the writers of Psalms makes a profound statement. They said he. That means whoever dwells in the secret place, in the shelter of the Most High. Sh Listen, I want to let you know that this is not a, 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 con, a, a, a thing where it's only closed to certain groups of people. He said that whoever dwells in the secret place of the Most High, anybody can dwell in the secret place of the Most High. But the thing is that I need you to understand is that the key word is dwell. You see, it's not talking about visiting. It's, ta it's not talking about uh, doing it like you go into a hotel. It says whoever makes a decision. See, I asked the Lord a little, a, a little bit ago, and I said, what is the secret place? And I came to find out that the secret place is not just the destination. It's a mindset in a person. You see, because the secret place if you make the Lord your secret place, the, the, the secret place can become wherever you are. David said, where can I go to, be able to, to meet with God? You see, he made a profound statement that no matter where he found himself, if he was in the woods, he's there and he can, he can make it his dwelling place. No matter where you find yourself, if you would dare make it an attempt to get with God, it can become the secret place. And so he said, he who dwells, a dwelling is a, a living place. Dwelling is a place that you can go, that you can lay your hat. And for some people, they have multiple homes. They have things like that. But the Bible makes it clear that wherever you go, it can become the secret place to you. Why? Because you and God are there. And the question is, can you get God's attention? Can you get God's attention? He who dwells in the secret place. He who lives in that secret place, getting in the secret place, it takes the mentality of prayer. It takes the mentality of honoring God's presence. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be in God's presence, when you get to the point where all you want to do is, is, is honor God, when you get to the point where, where all you want to do is be in his presence, where you want to be 
in his temple where you want to inquire of the Lord, where you want to hear from God, where you want to, look, I understand that God has a cattle on a thousand hills. I understand that God has all these things. But I just want to be with you, God. I just want to be more like you, God. I just want to wrap myself in you, God, and just, and just be there, God. I want to find a way, God, to meet with you, God, because your presence is more than I can ever ask for. Your presence is addicting, God. Your presence is addictive, God. Your presence, God, is more than enough, God. No matter what I'm going through, God, if I lose everything, I can start over as long as I have you. And, and what happens when it gets to that point is that is there's a place that you get into in the spirit. It's a secret place. And the, and the thing I get in, whenever I say that, I think about uh, my granddaughter or some kid, and they're in a tent, and they're hiding out in a tent. You know how we had those little cubby holes where we used to go and make those fortresses, and we would just sit and we would, we would just get up in there and get snug. When, when, when you make time for God like that, when you get into that place where you say, God, it's just me and you, and listen, you can be around a crowd of people and go into that place. You can be around a crowd of people and just go into that place where you give God permission to, to talk to you. And you say, God, no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, if you desire to speak to me, speak to me, God. Let me hear what you're saying. And I'm telling you, one of the most addictive things you'll ever get here is the voice of God. One of the most addictive things you can ever get in, in the presence of is the presence of God. I'm telling you, it's something about getting into God's presence that is so addictive, that is so alluring. I, I, I don't, I don't want to give you a negative connotation of it by saying addictive, but, but the thing about getting to the presence of God is it's so soothing. It's so, it, it, the presence of God is past finding out, and if you can dare figure out a way to get into the presence of God, when you talk to him and he talks to you, and you listen to him and he listens to you, I know a lot of people, sometimes when you talk, people just ignore you and they act like you ain't got nothing to say, but I'm telling you, God would never do that to you. If you just get into the secret place, schedule time with God, talk to God, treat him like, God, I, I can, can you come over and can you talk to me? The Bible says that he never slumbers asleep. So sometimes when you wake up, just ask him, say, Daddy, are you up? You already know the answer is going to be yes. But ask him to tell you something. Talk to me, God. There is a secret to whatever it is that you're missing out on in life, and it's only found in the presence of God. If you talk to God about that thing, God will tell you stuff. He told it to Abraham where he said, Abraham, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Why did he do that? Because Abraham made a secret place for God. When Abraham saw God coming from afar off, he started preparing things and, and this and that to be able to get God to stop and rest. And he went out to meet with God. And he says, I want you to stay with me. I may not have much, but everything I have is yours. Stay with me. Talk to me. I'm telling you, one word from God can change everything about what we're going through. One word from God would change everything about what you're going through. Tell them how you feel, people. I'm telling you, tell them how you feel. It ain't even always, sometimes, let me, can I be honest with you? There are times when I talk to God and I be like, I tell God, God, I ain't, I ain't feeling this. I'm not feeling it, you know, whatever, because I talk to him and he talks to me. And sometimes he may say, well, I, I get the fact that you're not feeling this, but this still needs to be done. Go and I'll be with you. There are times when I'll talk to God and I'll tell God things because he already knows your heart anyway. And I'll tell God, I say, God, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? Can you help a brother out? God, I, I just don't like that, God. I don't like, I don't like, I want to do this. I want to do that. What should I do? And there are times when I already know. <laughs> but it's just good to talk to him. It's good to make a place for him. I remember my cousin Naya, who, I, I, she was the funniest person. One of the things she used to do was I remember she used to come over because I lived in an apartment and she would, and I think at the time she, she was living in a dorm at the time and she would come over and she said, can I borrow your room? And I was like, what? And the first time she did, I thought it was the weirdest thing. But she said, can I borrow your room? And I said, yeah. And she went and got candles and she got all this stuff and she got some plates and, 
And she didn't ask, but she got some of the food that we had on the stove. And she got the stuff. And my roommate was looking like, what is wrong with this girl? She's crazy. And you know what she did? She went and sat up in my room. And I was like, you ain't having no dude over here. And she was like, I got it. And a few minutes later, I started hearing some music playing. And I'm still waiting on the dude because I'm ready to square up. But you know what happened? She made all that just because she needed to spend some time with the Lord. And she said, I needed to hear a word from him. And so she set up all the stuff. She set up a, as if she was having a candlelight dinner with somebody. And she just sat there and just prayed. And I thought it was the strangest thing at first, but then I realized that that was her way of making time for him. Now, I'm not telling you you got to make a candlelight dinner. I'm not telling you you got to do all this other stuff. But I'm telling you, sometimes me and the Lord, we, get, we sit down and we have fellowship over some video games. Sometimes I'll sit and I'll watch something and I'll ask the Lord. I'll say, Lord, what do you think of that? Sometimes I'll sit and I'm sitting with the Lord and I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just sitting by myself. Sometimes I'm driving in my car and I'll just stop. But whatever it is, and however you decide, sometimes I spend consecrated time with the Lord. But however it is that you spend time with the Lord, when you can get in contact with him, make sure you get in contact with him. But it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Now I need to ask you something. I didn't, I didn't realize that there was a difference between dwelling and abiding. But there's a slight difference. You see, one depends on where you live at the time. You live somewhere, then you abide there. You live somewhere, but abiding is, it's constant. Things change, things shift, but I'm going to abide here. I'm going to dwell here. I'm going to be here, and no matter what comes my way. And, 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 and David, by the time he got to Psalms 46, I believe Psalms 46 is where he picked that up. Because one of the things that David said in Psalms 46 is he says, God is my refuge an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and form, though the mountains quake and, and, and with surge, or they're surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she will not fall. I need you to catch that because when, when David, by the time David got over to Psalms 91, David had already gotten some of that stuff. And he says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty. And he caught that revelation that you will abide under the shadows of the almighty. And, 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 he's, and I need you to catch a picture. And, and, and every time I say that, I see a young girl like Shia and she's sitting there. And she's resting under the, under the strength of her father. She's standing or, and, and under the strength of her father. And see, I, you know what? There's a movie that I saw a while back, and um, you all may know it. It's The Lion King. When I think of that, I think about this. He who dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. There's a, a scene in The Lion King where young Simba was being a little rambunctious and he comes in contact with the hyenas and the hyenas are running and they and they're trying to get him and they're trying to kill him and Simba is running and, and, and he finally gets to a place where he's back where he thinks he's in a corner and Simba begins to do something that is in his nature he roared and he broke down and he was like wow and to his surprise the hyenas laughed and then they do it again, ooh, ooh, do it again. Mufasa, Mufasa, do it again, do it again, do it again. And, and, they, and, they, and they're making fun of his laugh. But then all of a sudden, Simba decides, I'm going to try one more time. And he roars and he goes, and then all of a sudden, the biggest roar that anybody, and, it, and, it, and, it, and he was so shocking that he was shocked. And he, even he jumped and roar, and everybody began to scramble. And then Simba looked back and saw his father standing behind him. You see, when we roar, if we're in the secret place of the Most High, the enemy may think, uh, uh, the, the enemy may laugh at us because in, in, in our mind, in, uh, we're doing everything in our strength. But what you need to see is the Father standing behind you. 
What you need to see is the angels behind you. And I came to realize something that, that, that is paramount to, to giving that revelation. You see, your roar may mean nothing to the enemy, right? And so when he hears it, he laughs. And the truth of the matter is, it, 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 even though it's in your nature and you want to be like the Father, it, in your roar, the thing that makes your roar powerful is not what the enemy hears when you roar, but the enemy hears his roar. And let me tell you why the enemy hears his roar. Because it's not that the enemy hears your roar that makes your roar so terrifying. The thing that makes your roar so terrifying, Crystal, is that when you roar, your daddy hears your roar. Your roar is not to scare off the enemy. Your roar is to get your daddy's attention so he can show up and bring power behind your roar. And so when you roar, it sounds like, God, thank you, Jesus. It sounds like even though you're saying, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you, you see, you're operating your power. And so your daddy says, what did I hear my child say? Let me go over here and see what my child's talking about. When you roar and when you begin to worship, when you begin to pray, when you get into that secret place and you begin to say things and you begin to talk, your daddy hears your roar and shows up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your daddy hears your roar. Your father hears your roar. Your father hears your cry. Your father hears the things that you say. Your father hears all that. And when you roar, he shows up. 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 When you worship, when you praise, he shows up. And, and, and it says this, that the shadow of the most high. I need you to catch that. He says, I will say unto the Lord, he, you got to say this to him, is my refuge. A refuge is a place where people who are in danger, where refuge go, and they go to seek self uh, safety, they go to seek shelter, and they go to seek um, provision. He is my refuge. I like this part. He is my fortress. He's my fortified city. Are you hearing me? He's, not, he, he's my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my fortified city. He's my God. That means he's my owner. He's my source. He's my sustainer. He's my beginning. He's my end. He's my Elohim. He's my super judge. He's my everything. He's my creator. He's God of creation before the beginning of time. I love that song. And it says, and when he speaks, a hundred million galaxies are formed. He's that God. And so I will say to the Lord that he is the beginning and the end of everything. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. And watch this. And in him, I will trust. It's not a question about if I'm going to trust him. In him, I will trust. In him, I will trust. Listen, as a, as a veteran, they got a whole lot of stuff to be going on. But at a certain point, I, I will trust in the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because his word is better than life. It says, I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. I'm going to trust in the Lord. My grandmother, she used to wake me up in the morning. I don't know why I feel that in my spirit. But no matter what going on, sometimes I've seen her with tears in her eyes. My grandma, some of her kids are acting up, and she was just sitting there, and she'd say, I will trust in the Lord. It wasn't that magical about it. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. And she would just sing that. And, it, and I, no matter what went on around her, she just, sometimes she'd she be, she just get calm. And she'd just start singing it. I will trust in the Lord. Then she'd say, I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I will stay on the battlefield until I die. And, she, and then she would go a little bit further. She'd say, and, and, and I believe sometimes she was correcting herself and getting herself together. And she said, I'm going to treat everybody right. And she would just sing that, till I die. But then she would go back. And I would wake up in the morning and hear that song. 
I will trust in the Lord. And sometimes when things get going on, going crazy in my life, I hear that song in the background in my head. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the owner, the source, and the sustainer of everything. I know things may be going rough. I know stuff may be going bad. I know that, that right now in times, there's a whole lot of stuff going on around us. But God, I trust you. God, I trust you. If it's hot in here, I need you to thank Brother Lamont whenever you <laughs> see him. And I'll tell you that boy can make an air conditioner sing, you hear me? But um, I will trust in the Lord until I die. And it says, so surely he will save me from the fowler's snare. In other words, when people set up a trap for you, and I'm not going to do the whole thing today because I got to finish this, some of this because it's some things that I saw in that I, I need to investigate. He says, he will deliver you from the fowler's snare. So in other words, when people set traps for you, because you've made the Lord your refuge, even the most high, he says that no fowler will be able to ensnare you. So in other words, they'll set the trap, but because you're following the Holy Spirit, you'll step right over it. Look, they may set the trap for you, but because you're following God, you'll step right over it and they'll fall in it. He says, from the deadly pestilence, And I mean, that's, that, 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 that's things that pester you, that's things that bother you, that's all kind of pestilence and different things that can go on in your life. And he says, and, 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 and he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you'll find refuge. I saw a video a while back of a bird. It's the strangest video. I started to play it for you. And the bird, the, it was a mother bird, and she was sitting on a nest. And there's this huge, gigantic tractor that's just there. And for whatever reason, they took a video of it. And, 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 and the tractor was coming, and even though the tractor was like a thousand times bigger than the bird, as the tractor was drop, going by, it swelled up, the bird swelled up. And the tractor just went right over his head. But the bird like puffed itself up, and I'm sitting there thinking like, what is this tractor gonna do? And this bird gonna do over this tractor? But that bird was that committed to protecting his young that he spread out his, that she spread out her wings. And I was like, man, that's, is that what it's like to be a mother? I was like, I, I put a post on Facebook. I'd like to thank all the mothers. Uh, I know it ain't Mother's Day, but I'd like to thank everybody who called themselves a mother because it's something to be that protective of something that belongs to you. But I need to let you know that God is like that over us, but the difference is that he's the biggest thing there is. And he says, it says, under his wings, we will find refuge. We will find safety. And I know that, that, that listen, I'm telling you, as a veteran, there's a lot of things that we have to be from our past that, that come up. There's a lot of things from my past that come up. There's a lot of different stuff that may come up. And sometimes it comes up in a, in a moment's notice. Sometimes it comes up whenever we least expect it. But I, I, I'm telling you this. God is a very present help in time of trouble. And it says he will deliver you. He will deliver you. This, 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 this Psalms 91 at one point was the, the prayer of, of Desert Storm. It was the prayer for all the soldiers. And we, and, and we put it, and I used to put it in a Bible, and I put it inside of my pocket, my inside pocket. And, 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 and there's, there's a story where someone was actually injured and where they would, would have died, but the thing actually went into the Bible and it stopped right at Psalm 91. But I'm telling you, listen, if you make the Lord the most high, your, your hiding place, if you make him your shelter, the Bible says that no evil will befall your dwelling. I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish in just a second, but it says this. He will cover you with his wings, and under them you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your buckler. 
In other words, his faithfulness will shield you. You see, because when things come up in your life, things that you don't understand, hurts and pains and different things like that, God's faithfulness will shield you. God's faithfulness will be your shield and it will be your buckler. God's faithfulness will look out for you. God's faithfulness will protect you. I don't even know how to explain it the way I see it, but his faithfulness will be your shield. His faithfulness. When you know that God is faithful to you, when you know what God has done in your life, when you know what God is actually doing in your life, there are some things that you don't even know that God is doing. Sometimes I thank God for the surviving the different things. I thank God for this. I thank God for that. I thank God for this. I thank God for everything he's done. But sometimes we got to stop and thank God for the things that we don't even know about. We got to thank God for the things that we don't even know about that we survived. We got to thank God sometimes for the stuff that didn't happen, that could have happened, or that was going to happen. Some of us I can promise you in our lifetime had some things that the enemy would have done could he have done it. There's some things that the enemy wanted to do but couldn't. There are some things that the enemy wanted to take from you but couldn't. Why? Because you had made the Lord the most high your habitation. How many people have ever left the place? Let's let's show your hands real quick. How many people have ever left the place? And then when you left the place, realized something had happened right right around the time you were supposed to have been there. How many of you have been driving in a car or doing something and you some we made something happen. You made a detour or whatever. And when you got to the place where you were supposed to have been or when you were on your way to the place you had been, you realized that something had went on that you probably would have been smack dab in the middle of had you went your way. What do you think that is? Think that's just you? How many times have we ever been in a situation where we, something could have happened, should have happened, or sometimes something did happen, and the Lord protected you from it? You see, but he who dwells in the most place, in the the secret place of the most high, if you abide under that shadow, if you abide, if you live there, if you make it your constant habitation, if you want to dwell there, God, I want to be like you. God, I want to be wherever you are. Then God will make sure that where you are is in his inhabitation. It's in the secret place. And he will cover you. I'm telling you, he will cover you. He will cover you. He will cover you. Why? Because God is concerned about you. Sister Erica brought it out when she was back there singing. She just kind of broke out. And she said, he hears you. He's concerned about you. He, she, she said, he sees you. He sees you. Why does that God see you? Because he's mindful of you. In Psalms, David says, what is man that you're so mindful of him? You see, I I need to let you understand that the almighty, he knows exactly where you are and he knows where you're going. He knows exactly what you're going through. And if you would get into that secret place, if you would begin to talk to God, begin to tell God what's on your mind, begin to tell God what's on your heart, begin to tell God what's on your What's, 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 what's on your, your thoughts? Begin to tell him everything about what you're going through. He already knows anyway. Why don't you just commune with him and talk to him about it? And God will make sure that you have whatever it is you need when you make him your inhabitation, when you make him your dwelling place, when you decide, look, I'm not going to just make this an occasional thing. God, God, I want to set my life up to where you can come in anytime you want to and just talk to me. God, I want to set my life up. I want to set my life up to where whenever you want to come in and do something or or, or be a part or take hold of something, whenever you put your hand on something, God, I want to be able to give it to you. And I promise you, God will begin to answer everything you need. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not finished yet, but I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this part later because, it, like I said, it's something that I believe the Lord showed me that I want to look into. But he says, his faithfulness will be your shield and your buckler. You see, in battle, I need you to understand that the battle is not yours. 
it belongs to the Lord. And if you would get into that place and get into his secret place, if you would learn how to commune in communion with God, if you would learn how to talk to him and how to listen to him and how to honor his presence, it, it starts with you honoring his presence. If you would learn how to honor his presence, That is the beginning of Psalms 91. Honoring God's presence is the beginning of Psalms 91. Because if you honor his presence, I promise you he'll show up. If you honor his presence, I promise you he'll be there when you need him the most. You'll begin to see it. You'll begin to see how God is is operating on the inside. You'll begin to see how God is operating in your circumstances. You'll see, begin to see how all those things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If you would allow God to, 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 to just inhabit your life, I'm not talking about on a part-time, part-time basis. I'm talking about where you make it your conscious decision to dwell in the secret place. God will answer. God will get in there right along with you. I want to close. I want you to stand. It's hot in here. I can think of a few places that are hotter, but I know I didn't go that far because I really feel led by the Holy Spirit. And one thing about some of the things that God allows me to operate in is knowing, even prophetically sometimes, when to go certain places. And I felt like my assignment on today was just to get you to commit to honoring his presence. My assignment on it today is to to get you to commit before anything else that with God is where you really want to be. I'm not talking about just some haphazard thing I'm talking about at this point in our lives, we got to begin to make some decisions. That God is the most important thing in your life. That God is the most important thing in your life and that you're going to pursue him. That you're going to chase after him. But you're going to invite him into areas of your life that were once off limits to him. Come on, who are we kidding? I know I have some in mind that for years I made off limits to God. I thought I made them on limits. But I made them off limits to God. Some of them because they hurt too much and I was protecting it, you know, like a child protecting their owie from their parents when they're going to put some balm on them. But there were some things in my life that I kind of said, God, I'll keep you, God, over this. But this right here, I don't know if I'm ready to let that go. But there's some things in our lives and there's some situations and some places in our lives that we build up strongholds to protect ourselves with. And what we don't realize is that we're even trying to protect them from God. But what I believe God is saying that it's time to bring all of that in. The things that you've been holding back from me, the things that you've been keeping from me, God says, I want you. And I want all of you. I'm giving you an invitation into the secret place. That thing that you've been struggling with, your answer is there, child. The thing that you've been 
harboring the hurt, your answer is there. I believe God is saying with all my, I believe it with all my heart that God is saying, get into the secret place. I don't know if you noticed, but the world is in a lot of turmoil right now. And a certain percentage of that turmoil has just seemed to be flying right over us. Have you noticed? It seems to be like we're, we tucked down and it's just going, some of it's going right over our head. Now every now and then we may poke our head up and it may cut a couple of hairs off, it may hit us. But it seems that when we get into that place, some of those things have been flying right over us. In an economic downturn, how is it that the believers of God are starting to be blessed more and more? In situations that are going on, how is it that believers of God are? And God says, I want you. I want you. Not who you pretend to be. Not what I, I want you. I want you. I want you, child. It's time to come into the secret place. It's time to come talk to me. Talk to me. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Talk to me about your frustration. Talk to me about your situation. Talk to me about what, what irritates you. Talk to me. I just want you in my presence. I'm waiting for you to invite me so I can come in and be daddy. I'm waiting for you to invite me so I can come in and be God. waiting. Now, there's an area where you feel the need to let God even further into your life. I don't need to talk you into it. You already know what it is. There's some things, if there's some hesitancy about coming into the secret place, I just want you to slip up your hand. There's an area in your life where you're hesitant about coming into the secret place. There's an area in your life where you feel like you need prayer. Slip up your hand. you to come to the altar for this part, but if you want to make a commitment to draw closer to God, I just want you to slip up your hands. And we're going to pray for you. If you want to make a commitment to slip closer to, come closer to God, draw closer to God. Father God, I speak life over your people. God, your people have confessed, God, that they want to draw closer to you. So, God, I'm asking, God, that as we begin to draw closer to you, God, that you would reward us with your presence. As we draw closer to you, God, as we begin to talk to you, God, show us, God, hidden things. Show us, God, things that are hidden in plain sight. And show us, God, things that are hidden out of sight. God, show us your mind, God. Show us your heart, God. As we begin to talk to you, God, show us the keys to the things that's been locked to us, uh, from us, God. But most importantly, God, give us your sweet presence. God, as we draw closer to you, God, love on us. As we draw closer to you, God, allow us to love on you. As we draw closer to you, God, keep us in perfect peace. God, as we draw closer to you, we give you all of our ailments. We give you all of our issues. God, I give you all of my fears. I give you, God, all of my doubts, all of my worries. God, I give them over to you. I give you my anxieties, God. I give them all to you, God. And God, no matter how many times I have to do it, God, I'll keep doing it, God, because I believe you are our comforter. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that we can come in and talk to you. So, God, I pray, God, that you would open up the receptacles of our ears, God, and make us, our ears, more tender to your voice. 
Father, I thank you for your people. Just begin to tell God that you invited me in. I thank you for your people, God. God, we invite you into our lives more and more and more and more. More and more and more and more. We invite you in. Come into our home, God. Come into our lives. We bless you. We bless you. And now, Father, I pray over your people that they'll be blessed in the city, that they'll be blessed in the field, that they'll be blessed whenever they come and whenever they go. I thank you, Father, that their enemies will come at them one way but flee in seven. I thank you, Father, that the same enemy, Father, can get in line with you and worship you with us. God, I praise you on today, God. God, we, as we continue to invite you into our lives, I pray, God, that you would grow us in you and that you would grow in us, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Listen, why don't you Give somebody a hug in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let them know that you're glad they made it. Let them know that you're glad they came. Amen. Let them know that you're glad they made it. That you're glad they came. Amen. In Jesus' name.